Welcome to our study of Nahum. Remember that this is divine prophetic information for divine transformation into the image of Jesus Christ. Nahum prophesied against Assyria by stating that Yahweh would take vengeance on Nineveh because of the violence that they had inflicted on Israel. The book is named after the prophetic author. Nahum comes from a Hebrew word which means to be sorry, to console oneself, or to comfort. Nahum writes to Judah after the fall of Israel or the ten northern tribes in 722 BC. The oracle speaks of the just and holy character of God that loathes the unrepentant Assyrians or Ninevites who have oppressed peoples around about them with their power, brutality, and idolatry. Nahum clearly depicts the details of the judgment of God and how the city would be brought to ruin. Judgment is righteous on Nineveh because of her blasphemous sins. God mocks them by challenging the Ninevites to prepare for war, which will soon destroy them and cause their enemies to celebrate over their devastation. We know very little regarding the ministry and person of Nahum. The text mentions that he was an Elkishite, which indicates that he was from a city by the name of Elkish. Four possible locations have been proposed for this site, though none of these can be proven. The fact that none of these views has any strong evidence suggests that no dogmatic determination should be made. It does seem logical to place Nahum in Judah rather than Galilee, or as some have suggested, in Assyria. Either way, the location does not affect the interpretation of the book. His name certainly exemplifies the ministry of Nahum, as he was able to comfort and console the people of Judah by assuring them that Yahweh would destroy Nineveh, which is representative of the Assyrian people, the Assyria, as a nation. And the reason why they are comforted is because they are told the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. Although we know nothing of Nahum's work outside of this book, it is safe to assume that he probably had a preaching ministry. He was a contemporary with Zephaniah, Jeremiah, Habakkuk, Isaiah, and Micah. His knowledge of the world events demonstrates his theological interest in the providential word of the Lord God on behalf of his people. God was providentially working through the nations and on behalf of his people. Nahum does not date his vision to the reign of any king, so the date must be determined from internal evidence. Three events in the book help to establish the date. The first is a reference commonly accepted as referring to Sennacherib and his invasion of Judah in the early 700s BC. Nahum predicted the death of Sennacherib and the cutting off of his idols and image. Sennacherib was assassinated by his two sons while he was worshiping in the temple of his god Nishrach. This was after Sennacherib was defeated by the death angel in the episode with King Hezekiah. Sennacherib's death took place in 681 BC. A second event was the destruction of the city of No Amman, or Thebes, today modern-day Luxor and Karnak, in Egypt. Thebes was destroyed in 663 BC by the Assyrians under the leadership of Asher Banipal. This event is spoken of in the past tense and therefore indicates that Nahum prophesied after this event. The third major event was the fall of Nineveh. Nahum prophesies of the fall of Nineveh in great detail. Nineveh fell to the united military coalition of the Medes, Scythians, and Babylonians. The destruction of Nineveh took place in 612 BC after a lengthy siege. Therefore, the writing of Nahum is established as beginning after the destruction of Noamen in 663 BC and ending before the fall of Nineveh in 612 BC. 
Nahum would have known of the fall of the 10 northern tribes of Israel to the brutal attacks of the Assyrians in 722 BC. The campaign of Sennacherib against Judah and Yahweh's deliverance of Hezekiah and Jerusalem from his hands took place in 701 BC. And this was no doubt a historical event in which Nahum could take great comfort. The rise of Assyria to its greatest height under the capable leadership of Ashurbanipal, the grandson of Sennacherib, would have been a great source of concern and prayer to Nahum. Some kings of Judah provided a clear contrast in the governance of Judah during this time. Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, ruled for 55 years, but he did not follow his godly father, but followed Ahaz, his wicked grandfather. He established altars of Baal and recognized Moloch by sacrificing children in the Valley of Hinnom. His son Ammon had a short rule as he died early in his reign. The next successor was Josiah, 604 to 609 BC, who began to rule at the age of eight years old. The reign of Josiah was characterized by repentance, adherence to the Mosaic Code, prosperity, and reform. It is important to understand the significance of Nineveh. Nineveh was naturally fortified by the Tigris River. It was a great city with massive walls up to 100 feet thick. The walls were surrounded by a moat 150 feet wide and 60 feet deep. These walls had a circumference of eight miles as well as another outer wall, a kind of suburb, one might say, of 60 miles. The enclosed land could support many thousands of people. The city had at least 15 main gates and as many as 1,200 guard towers, of which some were elevated over 200 feet. Excavations have yielded a royal library with more than 16,000 clay tablets representing an estimated 10,000 texts. The destruction of the city was so complete that when Alexander the Great came through there during his wars, he did not even know of its existence even though he fought a battle at a nearby city of Arbella. Napoleon camped there during his campaign, but was unaware of the significance of the ruins. The first recipients were Jews living in Judea during a period of Assyrian domination. The spiritual revival of Judah and reprieve from Assyrian persecution that their forefathers had experienced, which could have been brought about by the preaching of Jonah, was only a faint memory to this generation. These Jews were exhausted by the demands of life under Assyrian oppression. The question was not, will the Assyrians swoop down through the country and brutalize us again, but when will this happen? They knew that the Assyrians had captured the 10 northern tribes and deported them to other countries. They lived in fear that someday they too would go into exile. The main argument of Nahum is that Yahweh will take vengeance on Nineveh because of her immorality and idolatry and rescue and restore those in Judah who take refuge in him. A main purpose was to comfort Judeans and encourage them to hope that Yahweh would deliver them from Assyrian oppression and restore Judah, Israel, as a nation. Some key verses are found in Nahum chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. It says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. But with an overflowing flood, he will make a complete end of its sight and will pursue his enemies into darkness. Some major themes are devastation, judgment, affliction, Israel's restoration, fleeing, and you will discover more as you read. An outline of Nahum can be divided into two major sections. The first section declares that Yahweh, sovereign God of the universe, 
will take vengeance on Nineveh and his adversaries and rescue those who take refuge in him. Chapter 1, verses 2 through 14. The second section prophesied that Yahweh would destroy Nineveh because of her immorality and idolatry, resulting in the celebration of Judah and the surrounding nations over her devastation. From chapter 1, verse 15 through chapter 3. How should we read Nahum as a first recipient? Imagine you are paralyzed by fear, fear of an Assyrian invasion. They have already crushed and brutalized the 10 northern tribes and surrounding nations. You pray that Yahweh will render his righteous judgment by avenging their acts of brutality on their own heads. You read so that you might learn about the attributes of your covenant God. You need to understand his holiness and his righteousness so that you have hope in future deliverance. You want to understand his awesome power so that the power of the Assyrians does not cause you to tremble. You want to know that the Lord God is sovereign over the nations. You hope to read and know that the Lord God will deliver you, your family, and your nation from the brutal Assyrian peoples. You do not want what happened to the 10 northern tribes to fall upon your land. You seek to take refuge in Yahweh by listening to and obeying the words of Nahum the prophet.